Hi and welcome to another video. Um, in this video we're going to look at uh, actually running the Mosquito Broker. In the last video, as you remember, we actually looked at more the general aspects of running uh, an application under Docker, uh, Mosquito in particular. And in this video we're actually going to run uh, Mosquito. Now, as I mentioned in the other video, the actual image is called Eclipse Mosquito 2. and that's the one we're going to run and you can see the run command here now I'm going to run it in interactive mode so basically it's going to come up and it's going to show us the console um, I'm going to give the image a name which I mentioned in the other video called Moz Basic, and I'm going to uh, publish the port which is 1883 and I just want to show you really um, running the actual basic image what you've got and what you haven't got and it is effectively like running mosquito out of the box uh, the configuration file is all blanked out so you've basically got a blank configuration and you can't really do a lot with it which you'll see in, in a second now let's just uh, execute this command and you can see here the error message it comes up with and I mentioned that in the other video address not available now this is because we're running it with the default uh, mosquito.config and there's nothing in the default uh, mosquito.config and I pointed out the the reason for the error message is the is the port mapping so the first thing we really need to do is to edit the mosquito.config file now there are several ways of doing that and if I just control C and I stop that from running and it's just going to terminate now I can uh, look at the um, the running images and if I had done that and I can you can see here the command is docker container list now I, I did this while the container was running and now it stopped so as I've stopped it it shouldn't shouldn't be anything there and you can see there's no containers no running containers there so now I'm going to um, start Docker again, um, but now I can't use the the run command because I've already run it and it's, the, it's got a name called Moz Basic. If I want to use that run command again, I have to first remove the I have to first remove the container using Docker remove Moz Basic. But I'm not going to do that at the moment. I'm just going to start the container. And I can start the container using some options. I can start and attach to it straight away, or I can actually start it, then I can attach to it. Uh, I'm just going to start it like this. And if I go back to the command, we should see the thing running now. So there it is, up and running. Now, to edit the mosquito.configuration file, we have to go into the container, and we have to start it to go into it. So to do that, we're going to use um, this command here, docker exec, exec um, moz basic instead of moz and the shell. So we're just going to enter into the shell. Let's put that up there so I can see it. So there's our command, and now we can we're into the container, the running container, and if we just do a pwd shows us the the directory now we have to go and navigate into the into the folder that contains the mosquito.config file and and we're in the mosquito and we list those and we config so we cd to the config and we do another listing on it and we can see our configuration file and if i just show you it you can see it's all commented out it's just like in the standard mosquito install uh, right now as i've mentioned before i don't recommend you edit this file i recommend you take a copy of this file and um, when i create my configuration files there's absolutely nothing in it except what i need to be in it um, if you edit the file it's very very difficult to find out where you've edited it uh, i did actually create a Python script that actually filters it all out and shows you your your edits but you don't need to go to that trouble if you don't use this file you create your own separate file so I'd rename this and create another mosquito.com file now so we can open this up in Vi and Vi does exist on this um, install but not all 
Docker containers will contain it. You might have to install it before you can actually actually use it. Um, I'm not a big Vi user, so I'm not going to demonstrate using Vi on this anyway. Um, what I prefer to do is to create a configuration file on my host machine and copy it into the into the container. Now the container doesn't need to be running for this, so I can actually exit the container and stop the container and, and still copy in the files and copy out the files even though the container isn't running so I don't need to be running I need it to be running to actually go in like this and actually examine the files so let's come out of here so exit and take takes us out of the container now we can uh, stop the container And the reason I'm stopping the container is because we re need to restart Mosquito anyway uh, if we put in a new configuration file. So I'm stopping it anyway because I'm going to restart Mosquito. Now, what I do, and I'm looking for containers. There they are, containers. Now, all of my containers, all the configuration files and anything else, I create a folder for it. So this is one for Bitcoin. I'm running a Bitcoin um, image, Home Assistant, Mosquito, Node Red, and it has a Ubuntu image, playing Ubuntu image. So there's my Mosquito one. And there's the configuration file. Now, the reason it's shown a locked icon is because I've actually... Um, done a bind mount with this and once you do a bind mount with it the the application the docker application um, running uh, actually locks the, the files and so to do the, to actually go and edit this I need to um, go as super user and you can do that this is on mint so you can do that by um, open as root uh, I'm not sure you can do this on Ubu Ubuntu as easy as this but on Mint you can actually do it um, but you need to open it as root to actually get at it right I, I'm not going to do that for the time being I'm just going to show you because I'm not, I don't need to edit it because I've already edited it and So there's my configuration file. Now all I'm going to do is replace the mosquito.com file um, with this file. And you can see it here, uh, hello anonymous and listener there. Uh, the log destination. And these log destination files all refer to the internal container. So I'm, I'm putting it in the mosquito log folder and the persistent data going in the mosquito data this is all reference to the actual container itself it's not reference to my host machine it's reference to the container okay so now we're going to do the copy now being lazy as i am i'm going to pull up an old copy so i use this quite a lot history pipe it to grep and we're looking for the copy command here and you can see the one i've got here is up the top here um three double five four which is I'm, I'm going to pull up and before we run it we we need to go into the mosquito folder so i'm going to change directory to containers mosquito then that's where my um, configuration file is so now let me pull up this three double five four okay but it's copied it um I didn't need to be sudo to, to do that. It's just the fact the command was that. Uh, I just noticed something. I actually did the wrong one. Um, so let me do that again. I want to copy the the mos2.com file over. So I'm going to just edit that file to mos2.com. That's the one I want to copy over. So that's done. So now we're going to start it. So now it's running. And now I should be able to connect to it.
Um, before I do that, I'm going to attach to it so we can actually see the client connect. Um, okay. I'm just going to plug in a sensor and hopefully it will come up quite quickly. Okay, the sensor for some reason is, isn't working. I think he's a, um, talking to another broker. So let me just do what I should have done from the first time and publish using the Mosquito Publish tool. And let's go back to our... And you can see here it's working okay working as expected okay so now we've got mosquito running now the only problem with running it like this um, is the fact that we haven't got persistent data that it's persistent within the container so if I stop this container and restart it again um, it remembers the persistent connections that's no, no problem at all the problem is is if I delete the container then I've deleted all the data so there's no problem at all running Mosquito in Docker in this fashion at all. Um, we say, well, well, I'm not going to delete the container. Why should I delete the container? Well, what happens if you change the configuration file and you want to actually um, use secure socket layer as well and you want to open up port um, 8883? Now, to do that, you need to use the run command again you, and to open up that port uh, with using another minus P switch. And if you do that you can't do that with the current container as it is so you'd have to delete the container and then run the command again you could create a new container there's, there's no problem at all with that but again you've it's a new container so you've lost the persistent data so it's very common it's very normal to actually um, either use volumes or a bind mount and actually map the data over onto the onto the host machine or into the uh, to the volume. Now, the Docker volume is actually stored on the host machine, but it's stored as part of Docker, whereas when you use the bind mount, it's stored on the host machine and it's not a part of Docker and it's available to the standard backup. Now, I use bind mounts. Um, Docker actually recommends Docker. Uh, sorry, Docker actually runs volumes, but <clears throat> most of the examples you do see on the internet um, use bind mounts. So, we're going to now remove the container and we're going to run it using bind mounts. I know the video has gone on a lot longer than I actually anticipated and so I'm going to stop it there and we're going to cover bind mounts and other configuration files in the next video. Um, if you like the video then give it a thumbs up. If you've got comments then please comment below and if you'd like to get notified of new videos then subscribe to the please subscribe to the channel and until next time bye